Hello Malty Malt Magic Memories and thank you for the malt mention to Sasha Day or Sasha Day and welcome all you whiskey fans, malt mates and spirit curious to my channel called Ralphie.com here broadcasting from the Bothy somewhere in the Irish Sea and this is Ralphie Review 965 and we're continuing a series at the moment early in 2023 relating to the winners of the Oswiz, the Oswiz being the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards developed, promoted and endorsed by the online whisky community to be as democratic as possible in giving you perspective and opinion on what whiskies are worth having a look at and possibly buying. And in the category of best new distillery for 2022, the winner has been Ardna Merkin Distillery. And there could have been many winners because there's been a lot of new distilleries opening their doors in the last 10 years or so. Um, that strict definition of new distillery is for anything from three years to about 12 years, basically. Um, so once you've got your standard bottlings up and running, you're a more of an established distillery. But in the meantime, to be a new distillery, you're still fresh on the radar of the whiskey enthusiasts and your bottlings and your range of presentations are being explored with almost forensic detail. And uh, heaven help the distillery that gets it wrong. However, Ardnamarchen have been getting it right. So I'm going to pour you a very good example of a recent bottling for, from them. And I'll give you the details. I'm going to tell you about Ardnamarchen. I'm going to tell you about how much I'm enjoying this whisky, despite the fact that it's still relatively young. So, let's start with a bottle and the information. I won't, in this video, go over the other shortlisters for the title or the nomination for Best New Distillery in Scotland. I recommend that you go to Oswa. Dot co dot uk. That's O-S-W-A dot co dot uk and have a look for yourself because the more traffic we get to the, the site, the more that it kind of consolidates and helps to get visibility and reputation to the awards, which are, as far as I'm concerned, and I speak, you know, with vested interest because I am a co-host along with Roy Duff from Aquavit channel but we have got a properly organized simple straightforward and very revealing um, practical democratic voted award system here rather than a more traditional award system which can be and I'm purely speculating, you understand that, it's just an opinion, I'm sure you're aware of that, and I'm not making any big claims, and I'm sure you, re sure you realise that, but um, when you've got an award system which goes out to distilleries and charges them money to submit um, whiskies for consideration for awards, and charges serious amounts of money for a group table at the awards ceremony, well, money talks, does it not? With the Oswiz, there's no money comes from the industry. The entire project is funded by the online community. Ardna Merkin, best new distillery 2022. I've just poured a wee dram. Um, where will I start with this? This is the AD 1022. So bottled in October 2000, no, yeah, October 2022 uh, from AD Ardnamurchan, or it could mean Adelphi, because Adelphi Distillery Company own Ardnamurchan, more about that shortly. And this is the Madeira cask release. 
It's bottled at cask strength 58.2% and it's clearly written in the label, so clear and visible, in fact, that I don't even have to grab my steampunker magnifying glass to try and ex examine the small print in the contract. <laughs> As, you know, whatever you're doing, never sign a contract until you read it, especially the smaller print. The smaller the writing in the contract, the more important the message in it. Therefore, never sign a contract until you've examined the small print. We have 5,781 bottles from this particular release and it is Ardna Merkin, which has been um, finished in 250 litre ex Madeira hogsheads and I would suggest that they're fresh Madeira hogsheads, wet casks. Um, and I know they're out there because I bought one myself uh, last year for, for one of my rums. There you go. And it says clearly in the label where it matters because the label's the legal contract. It says unchill filtered, natural colour. And it says unchill filtered, natural colour because that information really matters. Now, if you're real whiskey active anorak, you've probably noticed that in a, a major online retailer um, blog post, there has been a suggestion by the writer that uh, chill filtration uh, effect is, is neither here nor there. And I'm paraphrasing, I understand that, but it's something you need to know. You see, what they're saying is through orthodox channels, the retailers, the official ambassadors, not nuisances and pests like me, I give you a different script, a different perspective. But what they'll say is, chill filtration, oh, don't worry yourself about it. It's just to make your whiskey look nice and crystal clear, like the gushing streams of water that cascade down from the mountainside, etc, etc, etc. Now, don't believe them. Seriously, do not believe anybody that tells you that chill filtration does not affect whiskey. And don't believe me. Here we go. Don't actually believe me when I tell you it does. What to do is buy a bottle of whiskey which is unchill filtered and natural colour and bottled at a higher strength so you get that lovely juicy hazy glow from the natural presentation of the whiskey. Pour a glass, pour a second, a third, uh, there's no rush in this, you can take your time, it take weeks, even months and then you decide, yeah, you decide whether chill filtration impacts a whiskey. It's not what anybody tells you, not even me. Not even me. I'm just giving you my perspective and opinion. And don't listen to any experts out there because experts are basically an extension of brand ambassadoring. They're salespeople. You always ask yourself at the end of the day, who actually pays this guy to say what he says? And I'll tell you who pays me. You do. You're watching, and also my Patreon channel subscribers. That pays pays for me to go to shops and actually buy bottles, just like you're buying bottles. So no preferential samples. And I just want to share something with you here before I go any further. I know it makes this video a little bit longer and there's some people that only want to see just the brief flurry of tasting notes over five minutes and then they've got all the information they want about a whiskey. But I'm just telling you, there's so much more that you need to know above and beyond superficial tasting notes to really get the most out of the whiskey, to stop making and avoid making serious buying mistakes. It's the knowledge, and you only get that from spending time with people who have done the apprenticeship over decades, and that's the reason I'm here in the Bothy. Apart from the fact that I'm really properly enjoying myself, 
sipping and uh, reviewing some really nice spirits. That, but that's here nor there. Do you know, it, it's your opinion at the end of the day that matters. Because it's your money that's paying for it. And I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with this. So listen up, listen up. In over 30 years, I have never, ever, ever once had someone complain to me directly or indirectly that they're disappointed because their whiskey hadn't been chill filtered and had artificial colouring added to it. Not once. But see the amount of times that people, particularly experienced people who are spending a lot, a lot of earned money, their own money, buying whiskies. The amount of times people have been disappointed because they've looked at the bottle, they've tasted the whisky, they've given it time, they've gone back and they're saying, do you know what, see that chill filtration? What's it doing to the whisky? Yeah. You know, there's people in the industry regard me for saying this and sharing this with you as being ill-informed. But I'll let you get informed for yourself. You decide. You decide. Because it's your money, your whiskey, your malt moment, and that is more important than anything else at the end of the day. Right. Nose. <laughs> Uh, here finishes the 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 little mini rant. Full flavoured. Well, I'm not tasted it yet, but the nose is full flavoured. A lot going on. Rich, deep maltiness, toasted maltiness, nutty maltiness, complex maltiness, loads of background spices. Just there's a hint of peat in the background, that little phenolic, youthful abrasiveness. The, and it's earthy. See umami, because you've got sweet, sour, salt, savoury and bitter. So we're in savoury. Savoury covers umami. Savoury also covers grain, slight grain sour, grain richness. And you get this intensity of flavour when you've got a yield of malted barley which has been kilned and it's under, slightly under kilned so not all the starch has been converted into sugars to improve the alcohol yield. It's restrained because if you've got some unconverted starch still in the grain at the point of killing, kilning, sorry, kilning, um, it will be transferred into a richness of flavour during fermentation. There you go. Just sharing. The nose inspires confidence. What I'm nosing is an old fashioned style of flavour, complex, rich um, result from a distillery. And the casks, the casks, I'm smelling casks which smell sweet. In other words, fresh sourced casks which are really suiting and complementing the richness of the malt from the distillate because it's not weak, it's assertive and therefore the cask can't really just impose itself as it can on a lighter spirit. Taste. Oh. Bright, edgy, and yes, I'm going to say it, a little bit rough. A little bit rough. But not rough in a bad way. Rough in an outdoors, gutsy, elemental, winter storm, peat fireside, bothy kind of way. So I'm going to add some water to this. And I want to tell you right now that I'm adding a full teaspoon, that wasn't quite a full teaspoon, so five millilitres of water to this standard 250 millilitre measure. Roll it around the glass, and seeing the coat line, it's thick, it's viscous. 
This is the sign that you get from an unchill filtered whiskey where the, where the barley oils and the juice coming out of the cask are still very much intact. I wouldn't recommend this whiskey for a beginner. But after even three or four years, if you get this bottle, you're going to start, start out confused by it. But as the bottle level goes down, you're going to fall in love with it. And it's going to create a problem for you. A serious problem. When you come across and have regular contact with bottles like this, you're going to go back to a supermarket style of bottle that someone's, and with the best of intention, well, Mom makes, they've gifted you as a Christmas present or a birthday present or a Burns night present or some present and you're just going to find it thin because you have the immediacy of experience comparison. That's what you get. Why is this whiskey the way it is? Well, did, Art Birkin, new distillery, opened its doors round about what's July 2014 so it's it's been kind of quiet for a few years it's allowed its whiskey mat to mature an extra few years before releasing it so you're not getting super young whiskey from them you're getting young whiskey but matured young whiskey proactively matured young whiskey furthermore the distillery is owned by the adelphi whiskey company there are no private equity vampires involved there's no bank vampires involved yeah okay i'm just telling you i'm just telling you it's my opinion i'm still entitled to it you do not have freeloading financial speculators who are demanding this next night this that and the next thing you have an established seasoned whiskey company the adelphi whiskey company which started way way back i mean there was an adelphi distillery in glasgow in the early 1800s did you know that uh now you do uh down in the gorbals uh, a very well known area of glasgow uh, i've passed through many a time in my travels although i didn't choose to stop very often <laughs> but there you go the site of distillery actually is now a mosque ironically and um the Adelphi Distillery Company kind of got salvaged as a brand by Adelphi independent bottlers who latterly their independent bottlings get quite expensive but they were regarded as good quality, a, de a desirable independent bottling. So when it came to opening Ardnamurkin Distillery you have what's called brave decisions. Uh, but brave, informed decisions. Ardnamurkin is on the road to nowhere. There's one road in, there's one road out. It's like Bladnach. It is a very isolated distillery. It is a very elementally situated distillery. It catches all the elements, all the weather patterns roaring in over the, over the Atlantic. And it's basically situated at the most westerly mainland point of Scotland which suggests that the style of Ardnamurkin is going to be rather like Ben Nevis, um, it's going to be rather like Isle of Jura, um, rather like Bonahaben for example, which are other, or, or Talisker as it, well, when it used to be a less sanitised version of what it is now. So you've got this gutsy, elemental, big, bold, brash, multi flavours. Um, and Arden and Merkin present this beautifully. They really do. It's not for nothing that Arden and Merkin is becoming a highly desirable, and I'm going to risk myself, I'm going to risk my saying this, Springbank number two. If Arden and Merkin actually did everything at the distillery itself, including at least some of their own bottlings, at the distillery, which wouldn't cost too much to do. But if they actually um, germinated their barley on site, kilned it on site, uh, milled it on site, and were able to have the benefits of resting their barley in between the process the way that Daft Mill most certainly does and Springbank certainly know how to do, then this would elevate Ardner Merkin even further. But 
you're going to struggle to find a bottle of this shortly because it's achieving cult status. Just, just, just warning you in advance. The flavour. I've added water. Super rich. Super concentrated. Dry, syrupy, barley sugar maltiness. Wonderful natural spices. It's got a real toasted note to it. Although I believe the distillery uses steam coil in their stills. But the flavour from the raw spirit itself is very prominent. More so than you would expect from many other distilleries because it's been the fashion, particularly in the corporates, to sanitise and diminish the actual original flavour of their new mix spirit to make it globally palatable. And that, I have to stress, is just my opinion. The arrival tends to dominate initially. So when you go back to and you'll you'll it'll take you a while to get your bearings with this because it is such a, a rich textured whiskey, even above and beyond the authentic delivery of it in its um, integrity form. The Madeira cask moulds beautifully with the spirit. It brings that dry tannic wine note, fortified wine note, which is complementing the malt beautifully. And I have to warn you, you're going to struggle to find a bottle of this. When it was released, it didn't sell out overnight but within a few days it's sold out. But do not concern yourself, there will be more bottlings available from Ardna Merkin, whether it's the unpeated variety or the peated variety, both are gonna be great, in my opinion. They, this is a genuinely exciting distillery and a very worthy winner. Very good judgment at the Oswiz on all the malt mates who have voted in it. Um, and it's gave, given me a, a very good reason to buy a bottle. I was just got lucky timing there um, and actually just open it and review it. And as you can see, I've been thoroughly enjoying it myself. This is old school, gutsy, bonfire, steam engines, coal stoves type, aga type. Um, a yesteryear single malt which has been wonderfully presented by people who seriously know what they're doing. I mean the head distillery Ardna Merkin has already been, had already been in the whiskey industry for over 20 years in other distilleries before he started at Ardna Merkin. So it wasn't a question of learning what to do. The people there are hitting the ground running and running fast and I shall shortly give this a rather complimentary malt mark, but, but, it's still a young whisky. But it tells me that as a 10 year old whisky in particular, and a 12 year old with, with a combination of fresh and refill casks, Ardna Merkin is really going to be, it's going to be, it's really well on the way to being seriously reputable. There's something else I want to say before I forget. On the back of the label, there is a QR code. Can you see that? Now, I tell you what, I'm going to hold it up to my camera, get it in focus, you get your mobile phone and scan it. Okay? You might even want to pause the video and then you can scan that code and see when you do. The scan will tell you how this whiskey was made in significant detail. Ardna Merkin is not a distillery you have to phone and speak to some very well-intentioned well person who will tell you, oh no, 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 we don't put, put, we don't chill filter our whiskey. Oh no, no, we don't, we don't put colouring in our whiskey. It's all perfectly natural, but they don't declare it in the label. Ardna Merkin, state it on the label. And what you've got to watch out for, by the way, 
is that you've got big distillery companies who will tell you, they'll swear blind. They really will, with all sincerity. Oh, no, no, we don't chill filter our whiskey. But I'll tell you what they do instead. They filter it without the chill. And because they're big companies with big resources and big filtration machines, it has practically the same effect. But you're not supposed to know that. But now you know because you're watching a Ralphie video. Cheers. Let's give this a malt mark. Now a wee bit more of a descriptor than a malt mark. There's some lovely oiliness, some clean, fresh, floral oil coming out this whiskey. It is so well made. It really is so well made. Taste. The wonderful viscosity. The youthfulness is diminished. It's raw, elemental, gutsy, gingery, malt rich, spice laden, delicious single malt whiskey. And the finish, for a young whiskey, the finish is bright and fresh and full of lemon rind and grapefruit juice. And there's so much going on here. It's not just the flavours. It's the sensation range. And the particular sensation I'm enjoying is the umami savoury range. Beautiful old fashioned whisky. But it's still young. It's still young. I'm going to give it a mark now. And you can say, hey Ralphie, you've really bigged this up. We thought you'd give it a bigger mark. But no, no, all my marks are coming down because I anticipate that whiskies in the future that I review are going to get even better and better as they develop a more refined cask policy. Mark, Mark, 85 out of 100. And if you want to pop back for my next review, which will be 965 extras. I'm going to talk about new Scotch whisky distilleries and I'm going to actually engage a comment uh, from a Patreon subscriber that was placed in my Patreon channel and I'm actually going to go through that comment and react to it because in doing so it's a great comment and it gives me an opportunity to just give you some soundings on a lot of the new Scotch whisky distilleries and other distilleries in the UK which are just suddenly appearing and there's a lot happening at the moment and the more informed we are the more successful are buying. End of. I'm Ralphie. Thank you for watching. As always, it's a pleasure to see you, even though I can't see you because I'm the other side of the camera. But hey ho, that's real life. We're not going to grumble about it because, you know, one thing we're having in common is that we know how to share a malt moment. And that's important. Bye bye.